transition for 2005 was second ACR left and they went up to Lewis and became a striker brigade and they were standing up fourth brigade, 10th mountain at Fort. Polk. Okay. Oh, so that's right. there was yep. a big transition that was happening locally. Um, and we didn't really know what, what we were doing. We still had some guys that were augmenting ODA teams and, and other ASOS as, as needed. Um, and then 2006 comes around and <clears throat> uh, a battalion was sent out. And we had the manning to basically man that like a ranger battalion. So we had six guys deploy with that one battalion. Nice. So all of us were at the company level slash platoon Sweet. level as needed. And so that was a really good segue for me going into the 17th. Yeah. But that 2006 deployment was – it was six months long, and that was when I really got my first tastes of actual firefights. Yeah. And, and calling in bombs and, and everything else. Um, we, we got put in the Argandau Valley, uh, which is just to the northeast of Kandahar. And this was right after uh, Del Toro uh, had his incident uh, mm -hmm. in December of 05. So we got there in March of 06 and replaced the guys from the 173rd uh, at Lar Larzab, I believe is what it was. Okay. Um, the name of the FOB. Um, but yeah, so, you know, went through that deployment. Um, some of the best people that I've met that I'm still friends with uh, from the, the JTAC side of the house, like that group of guys that deployed, I still keep in touch with all of those guys. Um, like as they, like I'm down at, at Herbie now. So as yeah. they kind of come through, uh, whether it's just, Hey, we're coming on vacation or whatever the case may be TDY. Uh, Cause some of them are still in the air force. Some of them yeah. got out and they, one of them is an OSI guy now. Um, another guy got out and said, I'm going to go fly Apaches. And then he got, basically he, he got put into the army's fixed wing program. So he's in the guard now that, and he's flying fixed wing, you know, stuff nice. for the army. Right. Um, yeah. So, but that deployment was, was definitely, um, a huge taste of what firefights were actually yeah. about, um, for the most part. Yeah, yeah. And my first, the first time I dropped as a JTAC was from a B-52 and I did four 2,000 pound bombs, airburst, staggered in the mountains, because I I couldn't really see them. I knew where they were, but I couldn't see the people. They were 400 sure. meters away, and I'm sitting there. And I remember, as I'm sitting there in this little rock circle, it was me, the platoon leader, and then um, one of the team leaders was to my left. And I'm telling the platoon leader, I'm like, hey, I've got B-52s. They're coming here. They'll be here in you know 10, 15 minutes or so. I'm going to pass them the nine line as soon as I make radio contact, et cetera. And as we're yeah. talking, you know, you just hear this loud crack and a whir. And I saw the PL kind of jerk uh, to his left and around basically came and hit the rock right on his right arm. It skimmed his right arm. And then the round went in between me and the team leader because we oh heard the, the whir go behind, go by us. And you kind of sit there and you're like, well, that just happened. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and then you just, you keep going. And sure, sure. B-52s check on. And I remember I had my 1-50 to 50 out. And I'm like, okay, I'm here. I look up. There's a saddle right there. I see the saddle on the map. This is where I need to drop the bombs, you know? Sure. And so I'm passing them uh, the non-line. I'm giving them everything. I'm like, hey, I want three 2,000-pound bombs, airburst, staggered, 100 meters apart. You know, and uh, the PO looks at me. He's like, hey, are we good here? I'm like, yeah, we should be good. <laughs> and, you know... <laughs> If I could think back to my answer, you know, it, I was caught up in I'm getting ready to drop. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like I did some AC-130 stuff, you know, in Iraq, but that's not the same. Yeah, it's yeah. like I'm getting ready to do my job. You know, I've yeah. Been the, with the gunship, it's kind of like you're in control, but not. It kind of, it's like you're both in control. You know, it's like with, yeah. Whereas fixed wing, they're relying on all the data to come from you, and that yep. you know they're you know we're yeah. So and, and it, especially. Especially at the time with the B-52s, they had no pods or anything at the time. Oh, so they couldn't yeah. see anything. It's just like, you tell us where you want it, and we're going to fly you know, in that direction and drop. Right, and right. so um, I'm just you know, doing the thing, and I'm like, you know, cleared hot. You know, and they're like, bombs away, 32 seconds. I, I think it was something like that, maybe 34. I don't remember. Yeah. But I just remember hearing it, and I tell the PL, I'm like, you know, 30 seconds. And he's like, okay. And I'm just like, I mean, the pucker factor for me, you know, because I'm nervous as crap. Yeah. Um, 
I've got, I did everything from a one to 50, you know, like an eight digit grid, you know, and I'm right. like, <laughs> <laughs> but then they hit. And I just remember, I mean, being 400 meters away from, you know, 6,000 pounds of ordnance airburst, like, I didn't realize how much I would feel the effect. Yeah, it's you not know, that far when when you have that kind of when you have that kind of ordinance for sure. Yeah, right. And it's not the yeah. same as you know red leg you know range when you're out doing training and you're dropping right. a you know two thousand or a five hundred pound bomb that's two kilometers away. Right. You, know, you still feel it, but you don't. It's it's just different. Sure. But I remember all the rest of the platoon as soon as as soon as it it, it detonated. Like they stood up and they were like, yeah, you know, they're just, you know, <laughs> flipping off. You know, they were cussing and everything else. And I'm like, hey, sir, like they should probably like we don't know if these bombs yeah. are effective or not. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> um, thankfully, they were. Warrior. Yeah, thankfully, they were. Um, but uh, there was some other things that happened for that deployment. But, you know, nothing, nothing big. I mean, I dropped a few more times, um, had several other firefights. You know, there were some other uh, small things that happened. Um you know, like the company commander ordered his sniper to fire over a uh, uh, a machine gun team that was pulling security during a clearance because mm-hmm. they were, you know, they weren't paying attention. And so he ordered the sniper. He was like, do this, you know, and it's just like at the time, oh, I'm just fired like, over them to get their attention. He fired over. He The company commander ordered his sniper to fire over his own guys just to get their attention. Let's just say that didn't work out. That didn't work out too well for the company. They weren't paying attention, basically. They weren't pulling security that they were. The discipline wasn't there. I understood why he ordered that, but it 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 was. uh, Let's just say that he was relieved. You know, so he got relieved. The best technique, yeah. Yeah, a new company commander came in. Um, But what was interesting about that deployment is I fast forward. You know however many years from 2006, what was it, 14, 16 years or so? Um, as I was getting ready to leave, we were setting up, uh, it was a FOB in, in Ghazni, and they were like, we want to establish a FOB here. <clears throat> so they sent a platoon out, and I got uh, attached to that platoon. And, you know, we just basically kind of roved the area, you know, looked at the fob. They were like, oh, hey, you, you're air assault. Like, we've got helos coming in. Can you guide them where you want the connexes? I'm like, I'll do the best I can. You know, I like, know. I've got a radio, so yeah. I'll just talk to them. You know, it's pretty simple. Yeah. But the platoon leader was Captain Silos. And Captain Silos was like, hey, man, like, you're in the Air Force, right? I'm like, well, yeah, yes, sir, you know. He's like, so what do you know about like combat control and, and stuff like that and like special tactics officers? And I'm like, I don't really know that much. I was like, I know that, I mean, they basically do JTAC stuff. Um, I was like, they do some assault zone stuff as well. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, but yeah, that's, that's you know, and he was reading a book um, at the time. And I will fast forward, but he eventually became a STO. And oh, TJ okay. Gunnell, TJ Gunnell, he, he commanded the 2-6 STS. When they first stood up, or not first, he wasn't, I don't think he was the first commander, but he, when they became, uh, as they were standing up, he was one of the commanders of the 2-6 in the early days. Um, and now he works with me in AFSOC headquarters. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah, so he's he's a full bird colonel, and, you know, he is one of the division chiefs for A3F, or he is the division chief for A3F. And, you know, he walks around and, like, when he first got there, um, another Sto was walking him around and showing him like, hey, this is where our ST guys are. And I sit in uh, standards and evaluations in, at headquarters. And so he was like, yep, these are our ST you know, guys that do standards and evaluations. And I just kind of looked up from my computer and I see him, you know, and he's big smile and I stand up, you know, just a big bro hug. And he's like, uh, yeah, what's up, dude? And I'm like, what's up, sir? You know, how are you? And so it's 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 interesting That's when crazy. you go from I was his JTAC when he was a platoon leader in the army. Yeah. And then he came back, you know, was able to get released uh, from his branch. And then he came over to the Air Force. And I've kind of followed him throughout his career. But now we're working together, you know, in AFSOC headquarters. And we do the command runs, you know, the first Friday of every month, et cetera. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it's pretty awesome, you know, just to That's have, amazing, have him. That's amazing, man. That's really cool. Yeah, it is. And he's a great leader as well. Hey!